Hi guys, welcome back to another tutorial on Apache Cassandra. In this tutorial, we're going to jump into CQL or Cassandra query language. And in particular, we're going to look at key spaces and tables in Cassandra. So the syntax of CQL is very similar to that of SQL, which is used in relational databases, but there are some important differences. SQL and CQL both have statements like select, insert, update that we would expect. One of the biggest differences is that, as we discussed previously, CQL has no joins. So we will take a top-down approach looking at Cassandra's data model. The outermost layer is the Cassandra cluster or ring, which is a set of connected machines all running Cassandra. We looked at some of the details about this ring and how to set up Cassandra in previous tutorials. Across this cluster, we can have one or more key spaces, which is the outermost container for data in Cassandra. So a cluster might contain many different key spaces, each of which stores different or often unrelated data. For instance, if we run a company that has many sub companies, we might have a single Cassandra cluster set up for the company and each sub company might be assigned a different key space to store the data specific to that sub company. In order to interact with Cassandra, we use the Cassandra shell. And this is accessed using the CQLSH command like we saw in our previous videos. If you haven't set up your instance of Cassandra, you can go back a couple of tutorial videos and look up how to set up a Cassandra instance on both Windows and Linux. Once we're in the Cassandra shell, we can create a key space with the create key space command. We then need to specify the name of the key space. In this instance, we're gonna just call it test underscore key space. And now we need to specify some settings related to the replication of the key space. Say for instance, we wanted our data to be replicated across three nodes in the cluster. In that case, we would set a replication factor of three for this key space. So to do that, we type with replication, double tap tab to autocomplete. So in this case, it comes up it replication, and then we need to specify the replication class. We've got two options here. We've got the simple strategy, and the network topology strategy. In our case, we're going to use the simple strategy as we're only running a one node cluster. Simple strategy. And then we can double tap tab again and we can set the replication factor. In our case, we're only setting the replication factor to one again because we're only running one node. Finally, we can set if we want durable rights or not. So to do that, we type and durable rights. And in this case, we want durable rights to be true. Cassandra will automatically default durable rights to true if we leave this out. And if we set to false, it will increase the speed of writes, but also increases the risk of data loss. So we can press enter to create that key space. The key space should now be created. We can check what key spaces we have created using the describe key spaces command. They should list all the key spaces in our Cassandra cluster. In this case, we can see that we have the test key space created. There are also some system key spaces that are there by default. We can drop a key space using the drop key space command. In this case, if we want to drop the test key space, we simply type drop key space and then give the name of the key space and press enter. If we look to see what key spaces are available again, we'll see that the test key space is no longer there. So, we want to keep the test key space there, so I'll just recreate it using the same command as earlier. So next, we want to use the test key space. So all subsequent commands we write are using that key space. So in order to do that, we simply type use and then give the name of the key space, in this case, test key space, and press enter. We'll see that CQL SH will tell us exactly what key space we're currently in. So inside a key space, we can have many tables. And a table contains a set of row which contain many key value pair columns. Often in Cassandra tables, we are dealing with wide rows that consist of a primary key and a large number of columns. In Cassandra, every row has a primary key which should be specified for data access. The primary key is also known as the composite key, which is made up of the partition key, as we discussed earlier, which decides on which nodes our data will be stored and a number of clustering columns. Clustering columns are used for sorting data and the order in which data is stored on disk. So we want to create a simple table, say for instance, employee by ID, where ID is unique for the employee and is used as our primary key in Cassandra. 
In this case, the Cassandra query is quite simple. We type create table, then we give the table a name, say for example, employee by ID. We then have to specify the types of the data we're gonna be inserting here and the names of the columns. So the first column will be ID and it will be a type int. And this will also be the primary key for this table. We also want the name of the employee, which will be a text column. And we want the position of the employee, which will also be text. We can press enter and that table should be created. In order to see the tables that are created, we can type describe tables. And this should give us a list of all the tables in our current key space. In this case, we can see the employee by ID table has been created. In order to drop a table, we can simply type drop table and give it the table name, in this case, employee by ID. When we run describe tables again, there should be no tables available. So for this tutorial, we want that table to be there. So we're just gonna recreate it. In the other table we talked about in our previous tutorials, employee by car make. Car make is clearly not unique per employee. So we cannot take the same approach as here. In this case, we have to apply a primary key called a composite key, where we use the car make as the partition key, but we also apply a number of clustering columns to make the primary key unique. So in order to do this, we again create the table, give the table the appropriate name, in this case, employee by car make, and then we give the schema for the table. First, we have car make, which is text. We have employee ID, which is int. And the combination of car make and employee ID will be unique. So that's what we can use to create our composite key. We also want car model. And that again will be text. We then want to specify our primary key. So in order to do this, we add a comma at the end of our schema and we type primary key and we do open and close brackets. Inside the brackets, we first wanna specify what the partition key is, i.e. what we're using to decide which node the data will be stored on, in this case, car make. And then we wanna decide the clustering column, which is how the data will be sorted on disk. Say if we're running three nodes, one node may hold all the employees who drive a BMW, and those on that node will then be ordered by their employee ID because we have specified the ID here and that is what we call the clustering column. So in order to create that, we simply add a semicolon at the end of the statement and press enter. That should have created that second table. We can type describe tables to make sure it has been created. And we can also describe an individual table. So if we type describe table and employee by car make, we will get details on that particular table. So we can see here, that it gives us back the command we use to create the table, which contains the schema, including the primary key. And it gives us the clustering order by ID ascending, which is how the data will be stored per node on disk. It also gives us information about several other factors that are used in the table, such as the Bloom filter, the garbage collection, read repairs, speculative retries. These are more advanced topics, some of which we may cover in later tutorials. So in Cassandra, it's also possible to specify multiple clustering columns for one of our tables. So we might do this when we want our data sorted by two different columns. For instance, we might have another table called employee by car make sorted, where we still use car make as the partition key clustering columns for age and ID. So in this case, our list of employees will first be ordered by age, and then for a certain age, they will be ordered within that by their ID. So to achieve this, we create a new table. We'll call it employee by car make sorted. And then we'll add the schema. So the first column is the car make, which is text. The second is age, which is int. Then we have ID, which is int and name, which is text. So then we want to specify the primary key. In this case, 
we first specify the partition key. We still want the data partitioned on car make. And then we can specify our clustering columns and we can specify multiple clustering columns here. So we'll first specify age and then after age, ID. And then we can complete our statement. It should create our table. We have a slight error here, let me see. So we added an extra comma between ID and int. That should be the same. So we'll just delete that and our table should create. And it does. Again, we can type describe tables. And indeed we can see that our third table has been created, employee by car make sorted. Finally, we can use multiple columns in our database table as the partition key. So up until now, our primary key consisted of a single column being the partition key and multiple clustering columns. In this example, we'll use multiple columns to make up the partition key and then have a single or more than one clustering column and the combination of our partition key and our clustering key will be unique to make the primary key. We might do this in a case where one of our nodes on our cluster is storing a lot of data and we think it's very hot. For instance, if nearly all of our employees are driving a BMW, it will all be stored on one node and that node will be overloaded while other nodes won't be getting much requests. So in order to split the data more, we might decide to split the data on the car make and the car model. In that case, our data will be distributed better throughout our cluster as only individual models for a specific car make will be stored on a specific node. So this is quite easy to do. Again, we need to create a new table. We'll call it employee by car make and model. We'll add the schema. So again, first the car make, then the car model, and then the ID of the employee, and then finally, We'll give the name of the employee. We want to specify our primary key as usual. And in this case, we want to use two partition keys. So we need to open a new set of brackets and give both partition keys, in this case, car make and car model. And then we specify the clustering column, in our case, ID. And then semicolon to complete the statement, and we press enter. Slight error then, I forgot to add the type for car model. Obviously, in this case, it will be text, and that should allow us to create our table. We can see that the table has been created successfully, and we can see all four tables there, including employee by car make and car model. So in this video, we've seen how to create key spaces in Cassandra and set the replication for the key space. We've seen how to create tables, both with simple primary keys and more complex primary keys. We've seen how to use partition keys with multiple columns, and we've seen how to specify clustering columns and how they affect how our data is sorted and ordered on disk. In the next video, we'll look at retrieving and adding data to these tables we've created and how during our table design, what we've specified as our partition keys and clustering columns can affect what data we're able to access and how we add data to our table. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment in the comment section if you've got any feedback.